iPhone 11 Pro Max has been on the market since 2019, and while discontinued by Apple, many people still rock this phone. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra has been stealing the limelight lately for being one of the best phones on planet Earth today. At the time, the iPhone 11 Pro Max really did, I think, push the industry forward with its triple camera setup, after that, you've seen so many phones coming with a triple camera, but the iPhone 11 Pro Max does house the Apple A13 Bionic chipset. How well does that fare against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2? We're gonna find out in the speed test. Let's begin with a boot up test in three, two, go, and see which one can get there first. Now, keep in mind that I don't make this video to kind of directly compare these phones as if they're very comparable. We know this is the latest Samsung. We know this is the older iPhone. Reason for comparison is I want to see, you know, if I was to trade in my iPhone 11 Pro Max to go grab an S23 Ultra, you know, get that trade in discount, how much better performance am I going to get? So the Samsung does turn on faster and that hasn't always been the case. We have seen newer iPhones turn on quicker than the iPhone 11 Pro, but the 11 Pro was only a hair behind. So not bad whatsoever on that test right there. Now Face ID has been a thing for iPhone for what it seems like ages now. And um, you can still do the same exact face unlock on the iPhone 11 Pro and it feels just as smooth as day one. So Apple definitely did a good job with Face ID. Still super secure and still super fast here for the iPhone 11 Pro. Now for the Samsung, I look at it bypasses the lock screen, takes away that extra step. However, this is not as secure, so I would recommend you guys go ahead, locate that fingerprint sensor. And if you noticed, I literally did not even have to turn the screen on because right here, check this out. If I just go ahead and hold down, it goes right in. So just easy unlocking. I would say simply, like I said before, locating that fingerprint sensor and knowing where it's at. Look, I could put it on a weird angle and still unlock that phone if I know where that's at. So that can potentially be faster. Plus bypassing the lock screen on the face unlock makes it faster as well. Now, when it comes to the general operating speed, you'll see that the iPhone 11 Pro Max definitely does have a smoother feel than you know some of the cheaper phones out there, but not quite as smooth as the Galaxy S23 Ultra. This is a 60 Hertz panel. Um, but for a 60 hertz, I feel like iOS is 60 hertz feels close to um, some 90 hertz Android phones that are, you know, not 120 hertz. Over here on the Samsung, though, we have really seen major improvements to the smooth factor this year. Samsung has nailed it. When it comes to being smooth, they have got this on lockdown. This even feels, I think, smoother than the iPhone 14 Pro Max in, a, in some areas. So... Definitely, they've nailed it in the general operating systems between these two. They're going to feel quite similar, but the Samsung, definitely smoother. So if you are doing the trade-in, you're going to notice, man, this phone feels snappier and smoother than my 11 Pro Max. Quite nice. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and open up applications now here on both devices. We're going to see which one can do this quicker. Let's begin with calendar. You could see pretty close. Let's go into calculator. Looks like Samsung will go into clock. You know, I couldn't even see it. Sometimes they're so close. It looks like the iPhone's flying in, showing a little bit quicker, and then the Samsung's blazing quick animation seems to take the lead. Let's go into weather here. And that one was the Samsung for sure. Let's head up out of here, and we're going to go into Instagram. And Instagram definitely on the Samsung. And you'll see not a major change once once in there. I have noticed that the iPhone, you know, 11 Pro Max has been performing quite well considering its age. This just showcases that if you do get yourself a, you know, Pro Max device, you should be able to go well over three years. We're headed on the fourth year here, I believe it is, for the iPhone 11 Pro Max and this phone still performs well. So when I told you years ago that if you buy this, you'll have this for four or five years, I wasn't joking with you. We're here in the fourth year already. And you can see even in application, pretty good. App Store versus Play Store. Play Store faster than on the right. And while I understand these aren't the same exact applications, you know, it still can show which ones you can open up quicker. That's the Samsung. Let's go into 
Twitter. And you could see Twitter first there. Ooh, that was close. That might have been iPhone. Let me know down below. Profile. That one was iPhone by a hair. We'll go over here. And uh, pretty close in that front. We'll go into Groupon here. Groupon first there on the right by a mile. That one's on the right. And this one's on the right. Now, if you're noticing, there is a little bit of a more of a difference here between 11 Pro Max um, and S23 Ultra versus like the other comparisons I've done. There's like a good half a second, it seems like, on some of these applications. Yeah, definitely noticeable. So that might add up throughout the day. And how does it add up? Well, it adds up like this. If you were to trade this phone for this phone, Throughout the day, you're just going to feel like, yep, this Samsung's definitely snappier than my old 11 Pro Max. Now, versus a 14 Pro Max, the average person probably would never notice. Even a 13 Pro Max, the average person probably wouldn't notice. But coming from this to this, it would be definitely noticeable. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2, but what about gaming? Because I always talk my stuff until we get to gaming. And here we are in Dead Trigger 2. As you can see, that's not going to break no sweat on either phone, but the Samsung a hair quicker. We're going to Asphalt 9 here. We'll see what happens here on the Asphalt 9 game. And looks like the Samsung is ready to go here first. And then we have the iPhone followed behind. So even in the gaming, it's going to go to the Samsung. Also, the Samsung a more immersive gaming experience. In addition to that, the cooling system is better. So we do have better cooling, which would equal a little bit more comfortable holding experience. So your, your hands don't get warm. Be pretty good, especially if you're not using a case. If you're using a case, though, you're going to be pretty good here. So, yeah, Call of Duty actually opened up faster on the Samsung as well. Not by a not by a huge amount, but um, definitely did Let's see switch to landscape. This is trying to do something here. I'm just going to head up out of here because we don't got time for that. Let's get up out of here. We'll go into Temple Run 2 next game. And you'll see Temple Run 2. Ooh, that's a big win to the Samsung right there. And this is even in a little game. So not a, not a big uh, game here. And that was much faster on the Samsung. Let's go into Subway Surf. And Subway Surfers classic really great game here you'll see it's based in chicago right now my hometown definitely faster there on the right we'll go into geekbench 6 faster there on the right 3d mark and if apple wins the geekbench test i swear they're definitely gonna probably have to be called apple bench if they win this geekbench test in this one let's go into kin master or kind master whatever you want to call it Looks like the iPhone had that. Actually, I don't think I ever opened that yet on the Samsung, so that might not have been fair. Let's go ahead and redo that one. I think I just added this application. Yeah, the iPhone's still a little faster to open this up. Could be because I had it in cache, but anyway, that's it. You know, throughout this test, you've seen the iPhone actually open one or two apps a little quicker, but Samsung, I think, for the majority was faster throughout this app application test, even in the game, so... But not by a lot. You've seen it wasn't massive, but it was enough that I think if you did this trade, it would be much more noticeable than if you traded from like the 13 Pro Max or 14 Pro Max to this. You wouldn't be trading on the basis of speed with those. But with this one, you would be trading on the basis of getting better cameras, bigger screen and more speed. All right, let's head through the applications here and see how the iPhone 11 Pro Max holds its applications in memory here in 2023. We were still trying to do this on the Call of Duty right here. Let's go ahead and do that. So, yeah, it still had it open, but here we go right here. Is this a reload? Yep, that's a reload. I'm not even going to wait for it. It's a reload. Looks like another reload here. Again, this one at 4 gigs of RAM. No 6 gigs, 4 gigabytes. This one over here at 12 GB, so three times as much memory. It should do better. This, oh, that did not look pretty. Yeah, so this iPhone, not quite as buttery smooth as it used to be. 
Uh, but it's showing its age a little bit, but it's easily still usable. It just doesn't feel as premium as the new ones anymore. Hopefully the ProMotion displays keep them even smoother going forward for these newer iPhones. Let's see what Samsung can do. Definitely so far I could tell you this feels much smoother than the 11 Pro Max. It looks smoother. That was not smooth though. <laughs> you seen that right there? So again, none of these phones are perfect. And I'm not copping out. I'm not giving Samsung an excuse. That was pretty choppy on that on that quick come out. But I mean, this stuff is very rare. And I still really appreciate how this uh, Samsung phone performs compared to previous years. So yeah, in the RAM management, Samsung definitely held way more applications open. Almost all of them, whereas the iPhone had a couple of them reloading. So you're going to get a better RAM experience as well, holding things in memory, ability to multitask with its features on the Samsung. In addition to that, holding those applications in memory while multitasking. Definitely better here on the right. Well, I think this is the first time in I don't know how long that the Samsung actually has won in Geekbench. It took me to face off almost a four-year-old iPhone for it to win here. So, yeah, some people definitely think they're being unfair to Apple here in these Geekbench tests. Maybe that might be true because every time you face it against any of the newer ones, it's not even close. But Samsung has won it out here in multi-core 4952 versus a 3736 and a 1927 versus 1638 on the left. So that's a win there. How about 3D Mark? What we're gonna do is a wildlife extreme test. This is gonna test more of the graphics and stuff like that. It's a short test, but it definitely showcases frame rates and stuff like that. So I'll be back when this is done. Now Samsung has completed this test first as well with a 37.33 and we have an average frame rate of 22.40. We're still working on the iPhone here and it looked a lot choppier. 2027 with an average frame rate of 12.1. So not exactly close here on these. And the iPhone was only averaging between eight and 16 frame rates per second. You'll see that the Samsung definitely between 17 and 27. So a huge change in frame rates means that your games will be 50% smoother basically on this phone versus this phone. So yeah, several years newer means several huge and performance updates, even if you're coming from an iOS phone to an Android phone. So definitely very fast here, a big win for the Samsung on that one. Now I don't wanna give it too much craze or praise, I said craze, praise, because the Samsung here is far newer. You know, some people are gonna say, well, face it against the 14 Pro Max, we did that. This video was to showcase for those iPhone 11 Pro Max users planning to go ahead and upgrade what they're gonna get. And I could tell you, ooh, this one feels quite hot right there. Get off of me. This one right here, definitely nowhere near as warm. So the efficiency is huge. Samsung takes the win here, of course. But by how much? Definitely enough to consider, I would say, doing the upgrade. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you on the next episode and peace.